What's up everybody? Today I'd like to talk about dropping laser guided bombs in the Viper because I've seen a lot of newbies having issues where their bombs won't release. Uh, to their credit, they've read the manual, they've watched tutorials, but their bombs aren't coming off the jet when they think they should. And the problem is an information gap between the manuals and the tutorials and a system that was added to our Viper after all of that documentation was created. So that documentation is, is missing some stuff that didn't exist then, it exists now, and it's throwing the newbies off. Um, so it gets a little bit long-winded, it might sound like a rambling, but before we could talk about a level CCRP delivery with laser guided bombs, like these fat boys here, we have to talk about the Max Toss Anticipation Cube. Now, WAGS did a tutorial on using the Max Toss Anticipation Cube to do a toss, but since it's a separate video and the symbology and everything didn't appear in the CCRP tutorials, right? They're kind of. It, erroneously implies that they're separate systems when it's actually a subsystem in CCRP that is always going to be there even if you're not doing a toss. So to make things short and sweet, basically you totally ignore the max toss anticipation queue and you drop on a second queue. So Let's just go through a level CCRP delivery and I'll talk you through what's going on. So uh, first, make sure we have everything set up. Of course, we've got our laser guided bombs. We have a targeting pod on the right hand cheek station. It's the only place it goes in the Viper. Uh, make sure that your sensor power right hard point is on for the targeting pod. Next, let's go into air to ground master mode. Of course, it defaults to CCIP. We want CCRP. You can change this by clicking through the menus or the HOTAS, your sticks NWS command will cycle through CCIP, DTOS, and CCRP. Let's move clockwise. Make sure your laser guided bombs are selected. I've got GBU 10s. If they're not selected, you can click this to cycle through your weapons. Let's skip profile one, leave that as it is. And let's set up our ripple settings. So I want to drop in a singles, but we're going to do a ripple of two and spacing of 150 feet. Why are we doing this with laser guided bombs? Well, I've read it in the real world, laser guided bombs, they're guiding in on a single point, right? That laser beam. Because they're guiding in on a single point, if you drop them in pairs or too close together in timing, they will converge and may actually hit each other and detonate in the air before they even reach the target. I have no idea if this is modeled in DCS, it probably isn't, but just for the sake of you know, ensuring we take out our target, I put a spacing of 150 feet here. And continuing clockwise, our fuse setting, nose tail. I usually leave it to this. Uh, you can also select tail, nose tail, or tail will work. Nose will not work. If you notice, there's a dongle. That's the sensor that guides in on the laser. That dongle takes up the space where the nose fuse would be. Probably not just the dongle, but the entire attachment with the fins and everything. So there literally is not any space for a nose fuse in laser guided bombs. The only space for the fuse is in the tail. So you've got to set it to either tail or nose tail. And we're almost ready. Make sure your master arm is on, your laser arm is on, and your codes match, right? So I've got the bomb codes default 1688. If you need to change that, go to list, 
zero for miscellaneous, five for laser. And there's the code. You can use the dauber switch to select TGP code, LST code, laser uh, time. Punch in your number, hit enter. If the number flashes, it means you've entered an invalid number. Laser time defaults to eight seconds before impact. It will automatically laze for us. And let's pull up our TGP. Right now it is not soy, not sensor of interest. DMS down short to make it sensor of interest. TMS left to cycle white hot, black hot TV. Let's zoom in on our target, which is a building here. And you really don't have to do anything other than slew on the target, but if you'd like TMS right for area track for moving targets, of course, TMS up for point track uh, for static targets. I prefer area track because point track in DCS likes to bounce around and shift targets. Now, of course, we also have to be aligned on this bomb fall line. If we are not aligned on it, our bombs won't drop and it has the Viper particularly has very very stiff tolerances for this bomb fall line now I'm gonna pause here for a second if you notice on the right hand side we now have a range scale this range scale did not appear in any of the CCRP tutorials and documentation yet and I think this is where a lot of the confusion starts so right now, I believe that 10, that 10 is a range scale. The carrot is our range to target, and we've got a bracket. The top of the bracket is when the max toss anticipation cue will appear. The bottom of the bracket is our level release range, right? So we're doing a level delivery, which means we want that carrot to be at the very bottom of that bracket. So let me continue here. Okay, pausing again, you'll notice the carrot has begun to fall. And also countdown timer at the bottom right hand corner. We've got our slant range, 9.8 miles, and we have a timer, 12 seconds. That 12 seconds is until the max toss anticipation cue. Okay, here is the max toss anticipation cue. About one second before it appears, and it's this circle, right? And we've got two horizontal lines. Uh, WAG's tutorial explains this for the toss parameters, so we don't really need to talk about them now because we don't need them for level delivery. So we continue. The carrot is past the max toss, and now we have five, four, three, Two, press and hold pickle. Bombs are off. Left turn, three to four Gs. Make sure the bombs have separated. Caution. We're going to get about 45 degrees offset from the target and get into a gentle bank as we laze. So this is a designator turn. We can reset our stores config as well. And shacked. And the laser will continue to fire for 30 seconds. Uh, if you're flying online with buddies, you know, a lot of people just stay on the uh, default laser code, so it's good practice to cycle laser arm off and on to get that laser to cut off and uh, not interfere with anyone else's bombs. So, uh, as you saw there, we basically just ignored the max toss anticipation cue. Once that queue ended, the solution queue reset along with the timer, right? Uh, I think it was about five or six seconds before uh, release. And once that second timer 
starts counting down. Once it gets to two seconds, that's when you got to release your bombs. So regardless of whether you're doing a level delivery or a toss, the max toss anticipation cue is always going to appear. Now, one more point of confusion is the release angle. So if you notice, I didn't mention anything about release angle when we were setting things up. Uh, let me put on autopilot here. Okay, so let's go back to the SMS page. Right, and I had just left that release angle default at 45 because I'm not doing a toss. We don't need to worry about it. All it does is change when that symbology appears. It doesn't change when your bombs actually drop. So I've heard people, you know, say to change that to zero for level drops and things like that. And it's just wasted effort because it doesn't actually do anything in regards to dropping your bombs. The only time you need to change the release angle is when you want to do a toss. So I hope that clarifies things. Uh, feel, felt like I was talking at 100 miles an hour there, but uh, hopefully it was understandable. And uh, yeah, I don't do tutorials that often because I am very mentally disorganized and tend to ramble. But anyways, hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys later.